With most saints, we celebrate the day of their death because it's their birthday into eternal life. There's very few that we celebrate their birthday being born into this world. We celebrate the birthday of Jesus, obviously Christmas. We celebrate the birthday of Mary. And we celebrate the birthday of John the Baptist because it tells us something important about who God is. And so it tells us something important about who we are. We can be kind of deists with this idea that God kind of got things going and then kind of stands back. But that's not the God that we see here in the readings today. I think when we think about God, many times we think he can only do what we can do. For example, it's impossible for me to know what your great-great-great-grandchild will be. And so since it's impossible for me, I think it's impossible for God. It's impossible for me to know what some man right now is thinking who's in the country in China. And so since it's impossible for me, I think it's impossible for God. So many times in trying to understand who God is and what God is capable of, if it's not possible for us, we think it's not possible for God, which is to say that he's much greater than we realize. In this first reading from the prophet Isaiah, at a certain point, Isaiah comes to this realization that what he says here, the Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. Isaiah becomes aware that the Lord knew me from my birth, that God had a mission for me from my mother's womb. He was thinking of my mission already in my mother's womb, which means that he gave me the strengths, he gave me the gifts, he gave me the weaknesses, already there. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. To name someone is their identity. And he's saying that God is the one who gave me my identity. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver, he hid me. He concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He realizes, even though I didn't know it, in my youth, in my childhood, God was preparing me. God was shaping me. God was preparing me in a way that was hidden. I didn't even know it myself. You are my servant, he said to me, to whom I show my glory. I thought I toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength. And so he thought that his mission was without fruit. He was preaching, people weren't listening, people didn't pay attention. But he says, my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. What I'm doing seems to bear no fruit, but God is the one. What I do, I do what I do for God, and he knows the fruit. And now we're reading him, 2,700 years later, something he could never imagine. Yeah, God knew. God knew what he planned. God knew why he created him. God knew his mission. And it says, For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. God is doing a history of salvation. God has a plan of salvation. And God's salvation continues generation after generation. And what Isaiah realizes is that I'm inserted in this plan. That God's plan of salvation involves me. That he wants to use me, as it says, that his God's salvation may reach the ends of the earth to be a light to the nations. And so the mission, the plan that God had for Isaiah was much greater than he could imagine, much greater than he could think of. And so also in the responsorial psalm, we see the same thing, that the psalmist says, I praise you for I am wonderfully made. And that's true for each one of us, that you're a work of art, something beautiful, something fantastic. All the details are right. And in the same way, 
God knew you from the womb. As I said, we don't know the future. God's outside of time. God's outside of space. And so he's acting in a way that we can't even imagine. And so God has prepared you for things that you didn't even know. And also he's been acting. He's been forming. He's been shaping you. But he knew you from your womb. From your mother's womb. It says, you know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways, you are familiar. God knows what you like. God knows the desire of your heart. God knows the details of what you don't like. He created you. He is that close. He knows you that well. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. When I was made in secret... When I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. And so this tells us how well, how close God is. That all the details, nothing is hidden from him. He knows you and he loves you. And so we see with John the Baptist that centuries before John the Baptist, prophecies would be, that God would send someone in the the spirit of the prophet Elijah, a forerunner, to prepare the way. Generations before John the Baptist was born. And God created John for a very specific mission. God knew exactly why he gave him life at that time in that place. It was a plan that he had because God's plan of salvation involved him. And So, at the same way, he gives him the name John. And the people say, none of your relatives have that name. But in the same way, his identity comes from God. Who he is comes from God. And his identity is related to his mission. And God created him from the womb. From the womb for this mission. And he also prepared him. The child grew And became strong in spirit. What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. They could tell. God has plans for this one. God is doing something special with this one. God has his eye on this one. But what's true for John the Baptist is true for each one of us. It's not by chance that we have life now in this time. It's not by chance that we're here today. God also has a plan for us. God's also using us in his plan of salvation. He was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. And so God was forming him, shaping him, preparing him. And then he entered into his mission. And his mission we hear in the second reading. St. Paul, who says the same thing. From my mother's womb, God called me. Even while he was persecuting Christians, at a certain point he recognized all my life God has been Preparing me, forming me, shaping me, because he has a plan only for me. That the history of salvation, the history of the world, passes also through me. That God has plans on me. God has ideas for me. God wants to use me in his history of salvation. And John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I'm not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. And so John's role, John's mission was to prepare the way. So before the Messiah, he was sent beforehand to prepare the way. So that people would recognize Jesus as the Messiah. So that other people would recognize that he's the one that has been prophesied. But this mission of John the Baptist is the mission of every Christian. That God is also forming us, also shaping us, also preparing us, also for our mission. Our identity comes from our mission. And he's also sending us in the same way. God continues the work of salvation. God continues to act through concrete people with concrete names. Isaiah, Paul, John, also each one of us. And he's also sending us. He's been forming us. He's been preparing us. He's been shaping us also to prepare the way, also to go before him. 
So that people can recognize Jesus as the Savior, recognize Jesus as the Messiah. What Isaiah recognized, what John recognized, what Paul recognized, that if God is sending me, he'll give me the grace, he'll give me the help, he'll give me the words, he'll give me everything I need to fulfill this mission because he prepared me from my mother's womb for this mission. And as I said, this is true for each one of us. To recognize that God is much closer than we realize. That God has thought of us much more than we realize. That God is acting in our lives in a way much closer than we realize. And he's also sending us to prepare the way. So that through us, other people may recognize Jesus as their Savior. As their Messiah. As the one that God has sent for them. And so as we continue to celebrate this nativity of John the Baptist, we ask him to intercede for us, that we may be given the grace, the discernment to understand how God is calling us, what God has given us birth for, what is our mission, what is the identity that God has for us, so that we can also enter into our mission, we can also cooperate, that we can also be this light to the nations, so that God can use us in his plan of salvation.